Great to play with you again, Ciro. Yeah. Your hair looks beautiful. Some beautiful hair. Yeah. Um, Special for you. <laughs> you know, when we were, when we, at the end, when you had the kashishi and I had those shakers, it looks like we were like flipping each other off. And, ah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a voodoo, voodoo thing. No. Definitely voodoo. For sure. This Love thing, voodoo. This thing, like we, we, doing it's not so technological now here no this my first time doing this you know like no, yeah no, i have a big team of technicians around me here you know <laughs> <laughs> and but basically we gotta do the same old voodoo that we're doing for all these years now billy and exactly I'm yeah so low tech man i did the menu with you <laughs> yeah that's why we're percussionists because we want to avoid having to plug in too many things and turn press buttons yeah but um I've, so let's just briefly talk about um you know how we met uh i just want to mention you know before i met you i was you know, just getting into Brazilian music, maybe for about a year or two, I was, I was learning, you know, Brazilian percussion at Drummers Collective, studying with Manuel Monteiro and playing a little bit with Peggy Boy. And I met Bob Moses, the great drummer composer, you know, one of my mentors, and he brought us together in a recording session. And I met you and it was 
right away you were the most beautiful person you were so sweet so generous with yourself and your playing it was so much fun and uh we became friends from that point on um but two years before that i didn't even know where brazil was that's how ignorant i was yeah even. i was a drummer i was playing rock and roll and jazz and Broadway music and rock, you know, uh, but I really uh, fell in love with Brazilian music. So that got me to you and, and a lot of great musicians. So that's when we so, met. It's so funny you, you say that because this so long ago, you no, know, it's like a 30 blah, 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 it was just years, you no, know, like a yeah. lot of years. Mid 80s, and, yeah. And uh, it's many things that happened that I forgot because, you know, the like, crazy life in New York and all this. But I remember exactly when I met you. First, you know, you impressed me so much, you know, that you're so young and so eager to learn and you know, fearless, totally fearless. And it was, it was a great moment for me too with Bob Moses, this, that recording. Was some, maybe it was one of the first recordings I did in New York. We wow. went to this big studio. I remember he put one microphone in the ceiling. You know, I said, <laughs> why he put the microphone up? But he was like very, uh, you know, creative, you know, like with innovations. And, oh, yeah. yeah. And, but yeah, for me too, you know, like when I came and, and I came, you know, to study the CMS, we're going to talk about this later. Yeah. But is we have a, one this song that is one a special song that we did for this occasion too is a song that I learned with Nana, and uh, I think like mostly uh, this thing that we are doing here right now is because it's forty years that I, I'm here in America now no, in in August. And I came to one of the main reasons was to see Nana, you know, and I, and and then I learned this song with him because he plays with uh, Gene Pepper, who was like a, a, a American nat native uh, um, saxophone player. <laughs> Probably one one of the few <laughs> few. Uh, Native American who played jazz, <laughs> and and he did this song. He used to play with Nana, and then I I eventually end up playing with Nana, and and I learned this song. And let's do this video. Show this video. Yana Ho. <laughs>
Yeah, that's great, Sierra. That arrangement of that Jim Pepper tune is beautiful the way you play it and the way you sing it. It's really your own unique way of, of uh, interpreting that song. I love it. Yana Ho, Yana Ho. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. You did great. I, I thank you. you. Yeah, last you night played, I played you, you played your grandmother's drum there. That's right. Yeah, that's my grandmother's drum, Chinese uh, tom tom that was from the early 1900s that I inherited. It sounds really. It really works with that with that piece. I just did it at like two in the morning last night. I just was like, let me try. Wow. And uh, you're my hero. Uh, so Jim <laughs> Pepper it, connecting Jim. Pe I think. What's interesting about Jim Pepper is the connection that our mentors have with him, like Nana, yeah. Vasconcelos, both, we both, you know, Ciro is very close with Nana. I, I idolize Nana. I learned a lot by just watching him mostly, spent a little time with Nana. But uh, Bob Moses was a drummer who was very close with Jim Pepper and he wow. played, he played uh, with Jim. Yeah. And they did a lot of things together. And I heard a lot about Jim. I actually met Jim's mom, Floyd, in Portland. He's a Northwest uh, Native American. Uh, incredible music, Jim Pepper's Pow Wow. That's that classic record. And so that brought us together. And Bob Moses and Nana were both part of Creative Music Studio. Yeah. Up in Woodstock. And no, that's but that's uh, why I, 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 um, I want to do this song to to bring that because you no, know, like a 40 years ago, this like a uh, end of July, you no, know, I came here to CMS from Brazil and it was a very crazy thing for me because I didn't know where I was going, you know, and I had my family in Brazil and and I came here for this summer course that Kalberger and Ingrid they used to do in Woodstock in a farm then I got there you, you know when you fall right place in the right moment these things that um, no but I one of the main reasons was Nana you know I knew Nana would be there and and then Nana came and he really I don't think he really like me much, you know, he don't want like, no, uh, oh my God, this Brazilian, it's gonna be a trouble. But he liked girls a lot. And then he was with the girls and the girl gave her, her beating bow for him to repair the beating bow. And when he did that, he broke her beating bow <laughs> by accident. <laughs> and and it was so embarrassed situation, but I have my beating bow. And he said, give me your beating bow here. And, and gave to the beautiful blonde girl. You know? <laughs> but then he owed me something. And uh -huh. that, <laughs> that's when he started. And, and then this, but this experience that I, I lived there in the CMS is something that I carry. I'm gonna carry until I die. You no, know, it's some so strong moment for me. You no, know, like about talk about world music. If you're gonna talk about world music, you you need to mention CMS because I think it was the first time in the world that musicians got together in one place and it was like. Oh, I'm gonna play my culture. Uh, no, like these things that always happen. I'm Africa. I'm Brazilian. Uh, like the, the, my music is uh, no. Wasn't like that. Was more like maybe if I take one note from my thing, I you put one your then we can play together all night. No, like and create something. I think that happened there. Like I, I think under umbrella of jazz too you know, because all they these musicians are was like a very accomplished jazz musicians too yeah but then cms you have a lot to talk about cms too yeah i well i mean it's so that it's that's you are there in i think the that was the most incredible period of uh where we had legendary people visiting living there like the beginning of this movement of all different musical languages and cultures mixing together in this one place, you know, under the direction of Carl Berger, and it might have been Anthony Braxton and Ola Tunji, 
uh, Don Cherry, you know, uh, Dave Holland, like incredible musicians, Carla Bley, and and you're one of them. You're one of the, you know, legendary musicians that went through there to follow these musicians as a student. And then you make all these connections. And I think that's really, that's still what CMS is about now. You know, we're having a resurgence now. So it's Creative Music Studio. Brian has at Creative Studio. It's creativemusicstudio.org is the website, by the way. But uh, it has an incredible history. And the fact that you came to this country just to go up to CMS yeah. to see Nana is like, it's like traveling to Mecca or whatever it might be for you or, you know, like a religious thing. You got to go and you have to meet the master. And it's such a beautiful story. And like, I'm so thankful for that, that you went there and you met Nana and then you have this beautiful relationship with him throughout your life. Nana influenced me like no other percussionist as a drummer and all of that. I mean, just all of the, the way he played, he's still one of the most unique musicians and you're part but of that legacy. CMS was amazing because I came, this have this for sure, this uh, Nana thing, but CMS was like, uh, you know, uh, a nest of possibilities. That's, uh, and that's what, you know, like, if I want to say, Pass any message through this, what we're doing right now is this, it's create possibility in the middle of all this happening, you know, like music is a possibility, you know, and, you know, I came, I didn't even have all the money for the tuition, but Tom Cora, Tom Cora was like, a, the, <laughs> he was a manager, <laughs> and, and then I, when I end up, like I, I, I had 70 bucks, you no, know, I said, no, I don't go to Brazil. I go to, to New York City, you know, just to go there for a week. And I'm here 40 years now, you know, with this <laughs> $70. <laughs> and now we talk about this. We have another video here. Uh, ah, it's yeah. not for this precise, but it's uh, like CMS when they had the second version of Woodstock in Woodstock, you know. And yeah. then you can see Nana and many people who was uh, on yeah. on that time with me there. Let's yeah. Uh, yeah. Who, uh, Let me just. Berger, the yeah. no, the lead, our beloved leader. Yeah. Ed Blackwell. Mm -hmm. Eddie Blackwell. And, Peter Afobao and ma many others. You guys in the and, you're gonna find. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'll talk about the rest after. But this was the Woodstock Jazz Festival, the only Woodstock Jazz Festival presented by Creative Music Studio in 1981 or two or something. I think that you're right. Some footage of that. There's Nana. All the jazz people who were around Woodstock. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, that was Nana at the end, just ready to almost play Barambao. Yeah, Aib Deng and Nana playing Talking Drums, Carl Berger on the balaphone. Then we saw Eddie Blackwell on drums and Colin Walcott on the tablas and many other legendary. Peter from Bao, the saxophone. Yeah. He, was, he was like a 70 years old. <laughs> yeah, Peter Applebaum, one of our directors, artistic yeah. directors, was there as like a 17-year-old kid. Uh, Peter's a great, uh, one of the great musicians that came out of CMS, and he's very much into world music. He traveled with Don Cherry. Uh, he works with Bill Laswell and a lot of other great people. He really has an incredible sense of uh, blending all of the different cultures together. Um, but we yeah, he, Peter also played with Beat the Donkey huh? for a long time. And wow, amazing. Helped us a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Well, let's move forward because um, there's a lot to cover. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, that was enough for now. If you need to, if anybody is interested in Creative Music Studio, creativemusicstudio.org, check it out. Uh, we're, we'll be doing a lot more things. We'll be doing things online, but we'll we'll be having a lot of events where we'll combine people from all backgrounds in music. We bring them together, and that's what we do. That's our that's our thing. So stay in touch with that. Um, Ciro and I uh, many years ago. Ciro lived about a mile from me. I live in Englewood, New Jersey. Ciro moved about half an hour away now in New Jersey, but uh, we live very close and we decided to uh, start doing workshops. Uh, and uh, we ended up calling them Rhythm, Sound and Magic. And um, I think you have a little footage of uh, maybe one of the workshops we did in your house in, the, in the, one of the first workshops we did, right? Or, or, yeah, or, or it was like a- you, 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 you like a, you're going very fast forward. Oh, the okay. story, you know, because when I met you first, like a, a thirty something years ago, you no, know, he he was so young, and then we did the thing with Bob Moses, and and it was so funny because Billy was playing a snare drum uh, in samba, Aisha, yeah. and, and and it was that time we have a lot of you no know, we. You have a Paddy Boy who was because I I, I went to New York, you no, know, with my seventy dollars, and, and then I stay in the street playing uh, beating ball in the street near the Blue Note there. Then, then like I, I met Jimmy Cruz and all the like the black community was the one who took care of me, the jazz people, oh, yeah, jazz mobile, me. and all this. I start to <laughs> get into that, but then come Paddy Boy who was the I think it was the first samba manifestation in New York, like we did with good musicians. And and then we starts to play a lot of Brazilian, like no Brazilian singer, samba, this, and then show up this blonde guy from New Jersey who plays snare drum like the devil, you know, like, say, wow. He played better than us. Then I remember the Brazilian very jealous of of Billy, you know, and he was he could do, you know, he had he had technique and everything, he, and swing, you know. And then I didn't see Billy for a long time. Then I, I went, I moved to you no know, to 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 New Jersey, and, and coincidentally we are like a few blocks of, and then I didn't see Billy. And Billy said, "Oh man, why?" You come to 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 our show, you no? Know, and, and then I went to his show, and he was a pop star, you no? Know, like, <laughs> well, Medeski Martin Wood, you no? Know, I remember I went there to sit in with you guys in the Beacon Theater. And Beacon the Theater, yeah. Was, was packed. Yeah. Was I was playing that time with Herbie Hancock, and you guys put more people there than Herbie, you know, like. <laughs> What's that? Whoa, look at this. <laughs> and then that's when we decide, let's do something together. I know I, I have the big living room and that's what we did. When you decide, 
I'm going to be a drummer. You don't, it's not because you decide to be a drummer, you are a drummer. No. You, it's like a, it's, it's, it's going to take a while <laughs> to come. And that's, it's hard, especially like to make art in, in this kind of technological society that we live. You, you and you decide, I'm going to be a drummer. It's very courageous. Yeah. And no, it's like more, the, more, more than ever. Yeah. It's, and it's going to have a lot of struggle you know, to be a drummer. Yeah. Uh, was well, a lot of struggle for me, and sure, what for you? Oh, yeah. But the struggle that's really uh, uh, make the thing interesting, no? And uh, this is just sort of an exercise in uh, getting harmonics out of these metal sounds, which is just like, you kind of find a way to sort of get your stick to, on any of these metal instruments that vibrate, you should lightly sort of press it in. That ended with my, yeah, with my <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that was sort of uh, an ex experimental noise. Uh, it sounds like voices almost, but uh, I, I thought we were going to see some of you working with them with the, with the, you know, with the plastic tubs and everything. Yeah, but, um, well, the, a little bit there. That. No, that, so uh, that, that was kind of the beginning of Ciro and I, you know, joining together and sharing you know, sharing our uh, our instruments with with the workshop participants and showing them how we make music together, teaching them some rhythmic ideas. Something came from some things come from Brazilian, some from West African, some from Bali. You know, everything we brought, everything that we've learned in, and we still do that and and share what you know everything we can do. Um, and I think some of the people who are who are watching us now want to know about even the instruments they, they've seen. So, but those instruments were just like metal gongs. Some things were from China, some were from Brazil, from Africa. And some was just like a big plastic buckets from the, the gas station that... <laughs> yeah, the junkyard, the junkyard percussion, that's the best. Yeah. Finding instruments, finding piece metals and springs and things. Very, no, but very it was good because uh, you know when, especially uh, for me, you know when I try to teach something, then is when I learn the most. And and I remember when we start to do that, like we research, find the instruments, and and this this beautiful thing that have percussion. I always say that that we can orchestrate the environment play you can play anything around you you know and especially now try yeah. you no know, yeah play some coconut leaves in the backyard <laughs> yeah bamboo leaves or any yeah, yeah. I, I think that's that's what i fell in love with uh of course the rhythmic language of brazilian music was really important to me because that was the beginning of my understanding that there were like many voices like you have soprano alto tenor bass there's partido alto there's the tamborine part there's you know the surdo and all and and how it was like four part harmony and that's when i started to realize that the way brazilian some brazilian rhythms are arranged it's a language and it fits in a certain way and then you can improvise and use any any sound you want to express your idea and that for me was just exploded my whole yeah. idea of what you can do as a drummer. No, I know what you mean. It's like the, the, this characteristic of Brazilian percussion, uh, it, it's because you, know, you, you have a, a percussion from Caribbean that it's few people doing uh, you know, very complex patterns, but like they, 
you know, the guy who does the scene, the conga, the, the, the clave, the timbale, and, and, and they do the polyrhythmic thing between the, then have the tabla in, in India, you know, amazing. But it, they are very complexing. In Brazil, it's like very simple patterns, you no? Know, because we play mostly in two, but thousands of pe people playing <laughs> together. <laughs> yeah. And that's what makes, and, and like what, like say, oh, the tambourine parts, uh, it, it's not uh, next to this year is a tambourine part. Next year can be the snare part. The, the, the hepiniki is next year is going to be the agogo part. The, they change, it's not yeah. very static. No, like yeah. Uh, yeah. this is think, what makes this thing you're saying. That's like, it's flexible. No, that, and, that's, in, that's, that's why I want to just say something about that because that's extremely important. Because when I got into Brazilian music, like you said, there were some people that were jealous of me because I could play a certain thing. But there were other people who were mad at me because they saw that I was improvising and they thought it was disrespectful to, to, to the tradition. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. What I, but what I learned with people like you and other Brazilian masters, they were like, no, we change it every, you know, it changes. If you understand the basic system, how, you know, the language of the rhythms, then you can improvise. And I think that's like you said, every year there's some new innovative idea and that's like living music that's like a living tradition we're not playing something that's you know frozen in time we're we're alive just like jazz you know it's just it's, it's and i used to say modern traditions modern traditions <laughs> yeah there you go and yeah. i think and, and and going back to cms that's what it was about everybody brought their traditional vocabulary and language and they expressed they spoke with each other through that rather than being like no you can only play traditionally this way yeah, yeah. it was like more open and i think most from what i've experienced is most of the highest masters of musicians always understand that new ideas and and, and communicating with each other and changing is 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 good for it you know it's not like holding on to this one idea and you know so brazilian music really open that to, I realized, wow, it's like, it's so, there's an improvisation, not only in rhythm, but in sound. And that's what like watching Nana use all the seed pods and what you use and you have slippers on PVC pipes and, you know, a, a broom brush and, uh, you know, so many innovative sounds. No, and, uh, yeah. But you know, this thing that, that about the the percussion, you know, like we that we can spend like that, you know. One thing that I admire a lot, what you do is because see, percussion is it's in our everyday life, you know? like we are surrounded about sound, about percussion, but percussion also. It, it, when I was in CMS, have a guy who was a killer djembe player. I came from Africa, I don't know. And this guy, I remember I got friends with him because we both speak very bad English. No, then we <laughs> got friends. And I never saw djembe in my life. That time it wasn't so popular. And then he said, no, oh, I play this instrument. I said, but how you know you do that? He said, man, I play for dance. This is not an instrument to play for music. It's, I, I am a, a slave of the dance. <laughs> if, if I'm playing and they are dance and I play wrong, they go, and I, I need to go out of the village. And, but it's this. I mean, not being so radical, but the percussion have to do with the dance, with so many other things. You no, know? and you, like you do a uh, visual. You no, know? you 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 paint and uh, you draw and do and do <coughs> cinema. You no, know? do film, mm -hmm. and this I, I think is great. You no, know? like because it's not just like a to be a musician, but to bring the these two are not other arts, no. Yeah, 
Okay. Yeah. What you're seeing there. Yeah. I think I think that's by really studying really uh, many different ways of percussionists how they express themselves. They are artists themselves in the way they express their ideas, like you, like Nana, like Trilock, or whoever it might be that we know, Ayerto, you know, like they're all like very creative, Hermeto and his, they all have this unique style. And, uh, and I learned how to be an artist that way. And that carried out into my visual world and also into the filmmaking world. And speaking of filmmaking world, you know, I think, and also just sound, uh, is how we can compose and use sound in film. And uh, I put together a, f uh, a couple of scenes from this Japanese film that you played on, uh, and also Steve Ture and a couple other musicians. Uh, I, I, I wrote the music for this. I got, we got together and improvised some things, and it ended up uh, in this beautiful Japanese film called The Shell Collector that came out uh, maybe five years ago. Uh, and uh, let's just uh, listen, let's just watch this scene uh, and you'll see how we use percussion and sound. It's very subtle, but this film is about, uh, it's a fictional story about a blind uh, academic who studies shells. And uh, what happens in the film is that this, this man, has, he lives like in a shell himself. He's very isolated on this. And eventually later he find, uh, this woman shows up mysteriously and she gets stung by a, by, a, by a certain venomous snail and they discover this cure for a bad disease and, and it leads into all this stuff. But anyway, this is the beginning of the film, I think, where he is introduced, um, if, this, if I'm not correct, let's, let's, let's watch it and then we can explain a little bit what's in there. ジラとすれ違った。彼らはこれから北極の海へ帰るんだ。冷たい水の中で次の旅の準備をするんだって。生物は種類ごとにそれぞれ自分の生活に適した場所に生息するんだ。so I just want to just quickly describe what that is about. So that, that was the other scene. That was the theme song. Uh, the fact Ciro had a very special <laughs> instrument he had built that had all of these keys and they were the chimes. And in the film, this this man goes underwater in his dream. He goes to sleep, he falls asleep, and he dreams and he meets his son who had died from the sting from the shell, actually. His son ended up dying. And uh, he communicates with his son. Uh, so this dream world of being underwater and communicating with his son is sort of like over underscored with the sounds of the keys. There's an electronic drone. There's a violin melody that I wrote that's sort of definitely more related to a folk melody closer to the like maybe the Okinawan or a simple kind of melody that might be from that, from a folk sort of uh, culture like that. And, um, and then we also had also some some shell some shell sounds, but that was it. Very simple, created that vibe. So um, let's just go to the next one. And this next one is going to have the great Steve Ture, who's a trombonist, who also plays the conch shells. And uh, and Ciro is playing like an udu drum, like a clay drum. He plays with his hands and makes that air sound that. It's very subtle, you'll hear it, you'll hear it, how we use this. Oh, 
貝はとても不思議な生き物だ貝類は地球上で昆虫類に次ぐ大群であるその数は11万種を優に超えるあらゆる地形に適応し多様な進化を遂げながらも貝は5億年の時を超えてその螺旋形を維持してきた貝殻はカルシウムでできたいわば骨だ中にも整然と螺旋が渦を巻いている貝は自らの分泌物で作り上げた美しい骨格の家の中で一生を過ごす Okay, so, so、uh, yeah, Ciro has the conch, conch shell,、uh, and we had Steve come over and play. He blew through the conch shell. So you hear this, woo woo, woo woo, woo woo, and then Ciro playing the udu drum, a little bit of electronic sound, some bow on the vibraphone, things like that.、Uh, anyway, I thought it would be interesting because of the unusual instruments and sounds we use. You'd be surprised, you know, not just as a percussionist, but as a composer, the, the sounds you can use. And I don't think I would have been so open and so. Confident that we could come up with some interesting sounds for this film if I hadn't been a percussionist and seen all of the different、uh, unusual sounds you know, that, that are out there. Of course, a conch shell is not a percussion instrument, it's a wind instrument. But、um, as percussionists, we have whistles, we blow through things. It's,、uh, it's more than the percussion category, but as percussionists, we have zero. You have all kinds of bird calls and things you do. and Yeah. So it's really endless the musical possibilities and sound. So tell me a little bit. I know you've been involved in some, some film scoring and making as well. Oh, for me, yeah. It's like, for, for, I think when I was like 80, in the middle of the 80s, this, no, for me, like for everybody, it was so hard to survive as a musician, you know? And then I got. My first big break was I, I got a movie, a Nick Nolte movie called Weeds. I went to, to Hollywood. To <laughs> I, I remember the guy called me, you know, that, that time and he said, Oh, I, I have a, a, a movie job for you. And I thought he was talking about moving, that he went to help me to move <laughs> his stuff. And I said, Look, I'm, I'm broke, but I don't g o n n a move your piano. This, no, <laughs> like, a, no, it's not this, it's movie, moving. No. And then I went and it was an, an amazing experience for me you know, to be making movies, you know, all that fascinating word. But it, Then, other things that I did, I did with, with Zorn. John Zorn.、Yeah. We, did, uh, we did many soundtracks, like many, for everything you can imagine. You know, we did for like arts, movies, like、uh, porno movies. We did everything <laughs> in between. Probably did commercials too. Commercials. Then, and And then, like、uh, more recently, that's、uh, Jonathan Demi. He,、oh, he called、oh, yeah. and, and he said, Oh, I would like to participate. And then I didn't know what he really wanted. I got so scared and what I'm going to do. And, and, but it was the, uh, uh, Rachel Get Married. Rachel Getting movie, Married, yeah. yeah. And then have one scene that's the scene that I, I, I want to put because have the thing we are talking about here, you know, that's what, what we used to do a long time ago together. Yeah. And there's a scene, what's the name of the, the, the lady, the, the actress in the.、Uh, 
Hathaway. Hathaway. Anne Hathaway. Anne Hathaway. <laughs> right, yeah, she plays. And she's like a crazy lady in the movie. Crashes, she the has... sister of the of, of something, I think. Yeah, sister. the sister of, of the one getting married. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's check it out. Yeah, this is your debut or your cameo with your band. <laughs> it was yeah. like it was like a moment. Yeah. Oh, incredible. <laughs> I don't know if that's gonna work. Hold on. Well, until when, if uh, Eleanor, while well, she's working on that, just, you know, there's, there's a lot, we're already almost on the hour, believe it or not. So, but we'll go over, we'll go another 20 minutes or so. Let, let's try to get through as much as we can. <laughs> It looks like Anne Hathaway's character is starting to have a little breakdown there. Something's yeah, going on in her head, you can tell. Total, total yeah. Out of yeah. yeah, that's a fantastic example of, uh, it's a Beat the Donkey? Is that Beat the Donkey? No, 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 this was like a, no, I got like a bunch of musicians together yeah. and we did, no. So good. And well, man, some members of Beat the Donkey. Some, 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 some members, but yeah, not officially yeah, yeah, Beat the Donkey. Yeah, yeah. Um, what is this? Yeah. Then. Well, let's move on. Let's move on because we want to get everything in, uh, share with people more. Yeah, like then, you know, continue uh, this thing. I I was with Nana and uh, that's more like in the 90s now, moving out of the, <laughs> the 80s and go more to the 90s. Then it's like, Nana, oh, you got to do a record, you got to do a record. And I was like recording in like many projects, but uh, you know, many things you record and wasn't in, in the shelves there. And say, ah, I don't want to do another, but no, you got to do and Zorn. Uh, they really pushed me to do an uh, uh, album. And then I, I did this songs from Villa Lobos. And who is a composer, a Brazilian composer? Like a no, uh, is our mean? main composer? No, like the source for us? No, like oh, uh, in Brazilian music? No, like Don Jobim is a big, uh, very influenced by by him and Nana nah, and everybody. Then I, you know, I never would knew that I never gonna play. <laughs> <laughs> like Villa Lobos music, the the way it was supposed to play, and then I did my I I interpretation, uh, 
and by the time I was living in Lower East Side, then many of the musicians are like from, you know, the, like uh, with, with Zorn, with Mark Rebo, with Greg Cohen, and, mm. and yeah. Shango Spasiuk, who, who was an amazing accordion player from Argentina. And amazing. then this, I, I don't gonna play the record, but I have like a, I did a band called Vira one of my projects, Vira Locos, and we're gonna play a little, uh, how you call it in English? This little Hillbilly Train. Little Hillbilly Train. That's uh, one composition, very famous composition of Vila Locos, yeah. Okay. Yeah, gotta make first. I gotta hold on. Just a minute. So you're calling it Vila Locos. Vira Locos, yeah. Vira, Vira Locos. Vira Locos, yeah. It was the Vila Lobos compositions. Yeah, like a turning crazy. Yeah, Vila yeah. Lobos. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the musicians. I recognize uh, Peter Hostens on accordion and Brian Marcella and uh, yeah. Jill and um, 
uh, some some people that I had uh, played with. Beautiful. And I love how the train comes in. Yeah. And I, that, that reminds me of something. When I first met Bob Moses, it was in a samba class at Jones uh -huh. Collective. And he saw me as like, oh, wow, who's that kid? You know, and he asked me, he said, hey, can you come play with me? Like, I, you know, come rehearse with me. And I asked him, who's Bob Moses? And he goes, oh, my God, he's a legend. You gotta play. <laughs> but what he said to me was like, man, I just got back from Brazil. He said, I had the most incredible time. I visited Herme Hermeto Pascual. He said, the music was in everybody's body. The way people walk, the way people honk their horn, the way the train was going the same. You know, he would talk about how musical even the train was in Brazil. Not yeah, like yeah. the trains here. Yeah. <laughs> like, so bad that no more trains. But you got you got the train that that, that time. You have that in the snare. It's like like a train. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's that's how he kind of described it. You know, the train had that 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 the uh, swing. You know. Yeah. But uh, that was beautiful. Beautiful arrangement, zero. Really nice. Um, let's move forward. What do you want to show something else? Yeah, you you know this uh, this time of, of Villa Lobos in Brazil, like in the thirties, that uh, Brazil got to a corner. You no, know, like who we are. You no, know, like America is already like they have like so the so many things that they as a nation they accomplished but brazil we, we no we was still like a co confusion uh, and then this bunch of artists you no know, like uh, this group of artists uh, under the leadership of oswald the andrade a poet writer he wrote this manifesto and it was like uh, brazil is what what do you, how how you can we can identify you no know? and we are anthropophagic people you no know? like because the native american he doesn't have the the native brazilian that's they have this thing about anthropophagia you no know? so this they, is like in english is like anthropological no anthropo is uh People, people. 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 Yeah. 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 is eating. Right. That's the kind of eating, eating people. I see. So you're taking yeah. the study of people yeah. and eating. And then like a, to make simple more, like in, instead of a be here to talk, the uh, NPR did like a kind of one thing that with me about this. Uh, I have this, my band at that time, it was uh, Anthropophagia, the name of the band wasn't anthropophagia because the americans couldn't say this name <laughs> yeah. i did a banquet of the spirits to make ah, easy yeah. and here is the oh, I see. the this is banquet of the spirits this is the nepr video then we can show oh, no. No. no that's not hey, but sorry. uh banquet so you're going to show banquet of the, the, the mumakata no, we're going to show this uh, anthropophagia, the NPR. Ah, okay. Yeah. Was this a duo? Yeah. Anthropo, people. Fagia, it's. We can't see it. People. You can't see it? My name is no. Ciro Batista. Are you sharing your screen? And. Well done. You share your screen? Uh, something happened here because. Okay. I think it's going to... There it is. Okay, let's start again. Antropofagia. Antropo, people. Fagia, eating. We eating people. My name is Ciro Batista, and I'm a Brazilian percussionista. Don't, don't worry, we don't want to eat anybody here. Antropofagia was a movement was an art movement in Brazil that happened in the 30s, was a manifesto, yeah. and I, I identify very much with that movement. People say, oh, it is a cannibalistic thing. <laughs> okay, the, the natives in Brazil, they eat people, but they wasn't eat the meat. They was trying to eat like, you are my enemy, but I respect you. I love you, and I love you so much that I'm gonna eat you. I ate John Zorn, I ate Paul Simon, 
I ate Celine Dion. I ate Miles Davis, the American Constitution, the French Revolution. I ate Jesus. I ate Buddha. And I'm trying to eat you guys right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Sao Paulo, but I grew up in this place called Ubatuba. That's the place where I have the rainforest and the beaches. It's incredible. When I came here, I live on Manhattan. I had people from Africa, from India, from Brazil, and different cultures playing under the umbrella of jazz. That's a very anthropophagic <laughs> experience for me. Even the way you make the instrument can be anthropophagia. Home Depot is a paradise for this, especially this session. so many uh, things it's a possibility no, possibilities for me you know I played with Paul Simon play with Sting play Villa Lobos music with Zorn and then I put that in a blender you know, and made a juice and think that's what I am now you know. everything that comes from outside we eat we digest regurgitate and eat again and again and again. We all eating each other. <laughs> oh, I love it. Such yeah. so good. That's cool. Beautifully done. Wow. Um, so we only have uh, you know, tell me, what do you, what do you think, Billy? That's but I'm, I'm going to tell you seven. We have a seven minutes, and we then we should take questions. So we could play one more song, and that's it. One more thing, answer questions, and then maybe close out with a with a video. So okay. show one more video. Choose yeah. your. Then we. I will, I, will, I would like to to show one more video. Then Let's this do it. Have this video is a Colin Walker composition. Colin Walcott, great. Yeah, yeah another CMS. Yeah, and uh, and then they they have at that time. I think this band uh, Codona was a a band that's uh, very important, like a world music. You no, know? uh, actually, I was talking before we start this thing here. Uh, I, I was talking with Gabby that. When the World Music Institute started, uh, I think Nana was very involved uh, in starting this organization. And we used to, we did some shows. And, but pre of that, they have the Codona that was Colin Walker, Nana, and oh, that's you got there. Don Cherry. And Don Cherry. And uh, then that's going to be our homage to these guys who were very brave in doing that. And that's my, my project called Banquet of the Spirits. And it, it, the, the song is called Mumakata. Let's try this idea. We start yeah, put, with put that. Together. Yeah. yeah. There it is in here. Cool. Thank you. 
<laughs> All right. I'm going to cut because it's, no, we have a short time. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's beautiful. What a great band. What a beautiful sound. Yeah. So many different. I miss, I miss play when I see that. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I, I do too. I think people miss watching you play. Uh, oh, man. That, you know, all the instruments are from different, different parts of the world. I see that um, Shanir Blumenkrantz is playing an oud, and then he's also playing uh, a gimbre, a gimbre. from Morocco. Yeah. And then, then the quarter type instrument, or is that a... It's a dozingoni, a kamenigoni. It's like we, uh, he played that. Uh, the, Tim, Tim Kuyper. He went to Mali, he played with uh, the V Farcatouhe, and then he learned there. Wow. But mainly it was because Don Cherry was an amazing yeah. uh, uh, nigoni player. Yeah. Really yeah. beautiful. And Interesting how that, defined, that <laughs> defines the sound. Yeah. Um, you know, before I don't know. I think we 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 going to to the, the today. Yeah, yeah. So before let's anything I wanna say like uh, thank you, Billy, to uh, do this. Uh, it's like I, uh, I I need that like a little boost. <laughs> me too. <laughs> oh, I love it. Forty years here, and then I can co at least commemorate with you uh, and for Brian, for Gabby, uh, Yuri, who uh, help now put these videos together and especially this lady here. Oh, Nora, yay, <laughs> yes. Um, we're not going yet, but um, yes. But, you know, I want to say that to take out of my chest. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> Get it off your chest. Yeah, well, I, I, I love you, Ciro and Eleonora, and I, and I love the World Music Institute. I think it's a great, a great organization like our CMS, Creative Music Studio as well. We're yes. All, like, we're all in this together the world bring everybody together the music you know this is a, an example of how people can you know come together make music and heal each other and uh so that's what we're all that's what it's all about um i want uh, let's answer some questions the first question was uh, who are your biggest inspirations with the baron bow oh, uh, uh two For, first was uh mr pastinha that uh, is like uh, the main uh, um, capoeira, master. capoeira master. And by a coincidence too, uh, I'm, I'm lucky that happens this in my life. I was in Bahia and in 1960. And uh, I remember we went to see him and nobody knew what capoeira was. Uh, and uh, and he gave me my first beating bow, no. Oh wow! And uh, with João Grande, who is another master who lives here in New York, and then for sure Nana, you know, we live ten years together every day, you know, and was and I came here to study here, and then it was one of these amazing stories that turned well because I. I end up have a band called Bush Dancers with him, you no, know, his band, <laughs> with Sergio Bandão and Tiz Go, and and then I was my first tours, you no, know, that he brought me, you no, know. and you know, I, learning beating bow was, you know, how more I learned like beating bow, like I was, we was to cook together and say, okay, let's do this, como é bater a clara, no, like do. <laughs> The, the egg eggs, whites. the egg whites, no, like this. And then he said, oh, look, I do like ta 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 because that's how I practice beating bow, no, like beating the egg whites very fast. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and I think music is like that. We needed to kind of take out these two academic things, especially now, and, and beat our egg whites and yeah. make music. No, like yeah. like a real human beings. No? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So that's great. Um, yeah, for me it was Baron, but it was Nana too. Also for talking drum, like you know, Nana introduced the talking drum to me. Uh, for, I mean, first time I saw someone really playing, and also King Sunny Eye Day's drummer is playing 
But oh uh, man, you remember King Snyder? Yeah, yeah. I went to not not to see the King yeah. Snyder. Yeah. Those guys are not a league, no. Like, oh, yeah, that it's like there. It's just some total musical voices. Someone asked, this is a quick one. Uh, have either of you played Native American water drums? I have not. Have you? Just a yes no, or no. Never, never. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so someone was asking to please to talk about the instruments you're using, but uh, we did, we are. Yeah. Um, and someone is just thanking us uh, for inspiration. Uh, what excites you most about percussion music playing now? I think we've been explaining that why. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, what is the meaning of hoda? And what is a comparison between clave and hoda? Uh, Hoda, like Roda, like Hoda, R O D A. I, I don't know. Hoda, Hoda. Hoda usually that I know uh, uh, could, uh, could be two things. One is Hoda de Capoeira. That's the main one, is a circle they do. And inside this circle, like we have a beating bow, because it actually is three beating bows. It's that. Uh, that's the in the in the hoda and uh, and the gunga uh, the the middle beating bow is like is the one who drives the whole uh, ritual and that's a hoda and the two guys they I don't know I, nobody knows what they doing if they are dancing or they fighting I think they're doing <laughs> both things uh, right. it's like you see a coin no you can't see the coin what in the back of the coin you know you need to turn then the, the capoeira is like this you know yeah and and i also have roda de samba roda de samba is like people who in the backyard of their house in the suburbs of brazil they get together yeah they songs. like they say they they kill a cat they do barbecue there and boom and and drink play cachaça, drink cachaça and drink cachaça no, caipirinha and all that, and then they make a, a roda. And a roda basically is like uh, they sing a chorus together, you know, and then then I improv improvise, like I, I'm gonna improvise, oh look, Billy he plays talking drum, but he used this glass and he had this beard and he's like, no, like I, each one like poke it, no, each other, uh, improvising and then come back to the chorus again. It, it's samba, no, hot right. it's samba, like a partido alto. That's right. what they right. call. Okay. And, but clave, never say about clave to a Brazilian that's against the religion. No, they, the clave does exist. <laughs> different culture. Yeah, different culture. Yeah, it's a wrong thing to say. Not an African, most, I've never heard anybody in Af the West yeah. Africa, Central Africa talk about clave either. It's a... But between us, like if you, if, if you, tambourine would be maybe a clave, Right. But it's something that's not static during the song because right. you, Claudio Hodit just told me that before he died. <laughs> he said, no, you can play tambourine. You shouldn't play like one pattern. No, you should play together with the melody, you know? And no, tambourine, you know, like this would be the club, you know? But no, yeah. you, can you hear? Yeah. No, it's when you play loud, it you can't hear. Yeah. Uh, but we have to move. Uh, what is this? Let's move. Yeah. yeah. So I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, so I just want to thank uh, World Mus Music Institute for having us. I want to thank you, Ciro, for having me, asking me to do this. It's an honor. And uh, I look forward to doing a lot more with you in the future. Um, and we will check out Next Creative. I'm Vert. I no, I, yeah. I will interview you. Yeah, well, I think, <laughs> and I think we're going to close out. Gabby's going to just close it out and, and, and stay tuned. There'll be one short two-minute video. Great. Thank you, Gabby. Thank you both so much. I mean, we could all be <clears throat> staying here for I don't know how much long. I feel like uh, this is way too short, but we will get kicked out. And I want to thank everybody for coming. I want to thank you, Ciro, and, and Billy, and Eleonora, uh, I'm on my second Caipirinha by now, and I really want to invite everybody to join us again for another W My Plus at home. 
And also want everybody to know in case you were late that you will receive tomorrow your email with a link of this recording. And so you can watch it again. And we thank everybody again for joining us and look forward to the next one. And now we're gonna close it out beautifully with more music. Thank you and see you again soon.